the only extra question I had, or only have kind of a few. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I know if you don't mind, I had a more, couple more questions just surrounding like um, camp and mm -hmm. I think particularly like for your family, like when you, I don't know if you remember, but when you first went, was all your family, did you all go together? You said you were with your grandparents still. Um, that I don't remember, but I'm, I'm assuming that my grandparents and parents went together. And I'm not sure about the rest of the family. Okay. Because I, I really don't remember because um, when, we went to, when we went to camp, uh, my first uh, memory was um, uh, we were in a unit with my grandparents, my parents and grandparents. Oh. So my the rest of the family were not in that one barrack. It was just just us. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm guessing that uh, it was just my parents and grandparents. Okay. Do your did your parents or grandparents ever talk about it or, or tell you guys stories? When no. No, it's not a... No, they that, never... They it never follows the other tradition. Yeah, because a lot of them don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. you know, because it was such a uh, scare. I think, especially for my, like, my grandparents, uh, not speaking English, not... They don't really know what's going on, you know, so... I, th I would think it was scary for them, you know, and, um, but <clears throat> they never talked about it. And my parents never really talked about it. It's, it's just that my, I remember my mom saying that she couldn't stand, stand it. And that's why uh, when the men folks went out to work, you know, they formed a crew and went out to work. Then she went with them because she wanted out, out of the camp. Mm -hmm. so. But they, uh, other than that, she never really talked about it. Definitely makes, <laughs> makes sense because yeah, that's all the, it was, yeah, I don't know, at least like in our readings, there's that, the theme of, yeah. That they, yeah, a lot of people. It, yeah. yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, they they never they never talk about it. And you talk to the younger people, and they never heard, they never heard any stories. Right. Did you? Oh, I did have a question. Only um, was it you said because your father met the Japanese farmers mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. How were they? They, they were they not, in, not camp. in camp. No, How because. Um, only the people on the coast, uh, and I, I, and I don't know how far inland was the was the um, boundary, but if you lived within that area, you had to move away from the coast, and then that's where they put. Some families, you know, moved before they were put into camp. They upped and left. A lot of them went to like Utah or Arizona or someplace, or you know, further just to get away from the coast because they didn't want to go into camp. So um, in Idaho, <coughs> there were some Japanese farmers there, but they didn't have to go to camp because they were far enough east mm -hmm. from the coast, so they didn't have to go to camp. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I guess, okay, moving on to... When, okay, I guess where I was trying to remember, do you remember anything about uh, about reparations? That would have been during the... Uh, it was like in 88. Right. Yeah, we... What do you, yeah. Like, well, we got, you we got, we got, we uh, got, everybody that was in camp got a, a, a check for, okay. for 20,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got my, uh, we got ours, my husband got, I got mine. Okay. So, so 80s, you, you were married, by the way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, like, cause I, what I've, you know, heard and read, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of the activism and, uh, I don't know, if there, yeah, protests and just, like, a lot of political activities surrounding that. Do you well, remember they, any of that? <coughs> no, I don't really remember too much about, about it. 
um, uh, I just know we had to uh, submit our names and, and uh, what camp we were in, and, you know, and so that's that's what we did. But I know there was a lot of people that that did a lot to and I worked for this reparation. You know, they went to I mean, they just uh, these lawyers and activists and stuff. They uh, petitioned and went to Congress and talk to the Congress people and stuff and and that's how it finally got approved. But I wasn't in wasn't involved in any of it. Um, when you when you and your husband had come to or when you were like living in this area, was there any was there ever a time that you thought of moving to another state or like um, I don't know, anywhere East Coast or did you, were you just pretty content staying? Yeah, yeah. I, I no, he, we never, it never um, we never thought of moving away. No. Okay. Um, okay. I I guess my other thing was I wanted to ask more just about all your trips and your travels. Oh my God. I, I don't know. That was my favorite part of hearing <laughs> stuff last time. All that trip. All the trips um, that I took. Yeah. Okay. I guess maybe one of these. Uh, you know, one of those like what. You told me a lot of the different experiences, I guess, but like, can you pick a time, like, oh yeah, you're telling me some of the craz the crazier stories, like, mm -hmm. of, you know, come, you know, running in ahead of storms and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you remember, is there, are there any other, like, either, like, scary moments or, like, just, like, kind of crazy memories you have of a particular trip or anything like that? Hmm. Oh, I told you about the Olympics, right? I went mm -hmm. to Seoul and then, and then we went to the Atlantic City and then there was, what a disappointment that was because there was nothing, nothing ready. Um, nothing outstanding. I, it's, it's just that I just enjoyed it, all the, all the trips. Um, Do you remember any moments, um, like I guess on the opposite end of the spectrum? Do you remember any like moments of just like standing and really and taking in either either nature or just something that was kind of like overwhelming and well, yeah, in Europe, yeah, in Europe, I in Europe, my whole trip in Europe, I just it it just amazed me mm -hmm. to see the buildings, you know, like those huge uh, cathedrals and stuff. And they were built like, you know, years and years, you know, hundreds of years ago. And how did they do all that work with no modern equipment? And so the trip to Europe uh, really, really amazed me. And I know we were, um, one of the, when we were on the uh, uh, Greek Isle uh, trip, we stopped at one of the uh, uh, islands, and um, we had to stop, and we were waiting for a group of people or something. And I was sitting there, and I, I, it just—I just sat there in amazement because there was this building, and the whole facade was uh, rocks, but they were in arches like this. How did they get? Put those rocks up there, and and the the arches were so precise, you know. And I, I I just sat there and just kept looking at it because it just amazed me. But yeah, the the you know uh, Europe trip was to me was very amazing because of the mm -hmm. historical part of it. So. Do you think you've ever had like, or can you describe to me, I don't know, like either, yeah, one of those moments where you're just kind of like sitting in awe of something or like, like maybe something that could be described as like a spiritual experience or one of, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but one of those moments where you kind of like are able to step outside, I don't know, maybe it was on one of your trips or maybe not, uh, but 
Well, it's, it's very, well, it, going back to Europe, we were going, mm -hmm. sitting in sitting in the cathedral and looking at the stained glass windows. You know, you just sit there and just just sit there and looking at it. It, it, it was very spir spiritual. Mm -hmm. you know? and, uh, another thing that was uh, uh, amazing was the pyramid in in in, <laughs> Gre in Egypt. Because you look at that and you think, oh my gosh, it's like a wonder, you know. How did they ever do things like that? Yeah, so let's see, have you, have you, I'm trying to think if you've been to all the places while the seven wonders are, right? No, I don't have think so. Seen, you have, so other than the pyramids, have you seen any of those other? <laughs> The seven wonders of the world. I don't. What I are guess they? Not the Great Wall of China. Right? No, I didn't I think see that's that. One of them. Oh, is it? I don't even. What? What are they? Actually, I can't even remember the other ones. Mm. The pyramids always stand out. To yeah, me, but and we saw that. Maybe, maybe somewhere in Europe. Maybe some of the cliffs or something. Mm. I don't know. But yeah, it's incredible. I can't imagine. Yeah. Just that giant. To think, like, yeah. I think when we look at buildings, especially or something that's like made by people, mm -hmm. and I don't know why it seems a little more more crazy because you're like connecting to people who made it as well. Um, let's see. I guess. Hmm. Okay, I guess I had a question. Like when you first came to like LA and like plugged into the different groups, we might have I'm trying to think, we might have talked about it a little bit. Um, why, like, why do you think, I know, I think you said it was, it seemed unusual for you to, like, drift towards the Japanese groups, because you grew up, you know, in the Caucasian kind of area. Why do you think, you think it was just out of that, like, common identity you found yourself kind of drifting to those groups and feeling most comfortable there? I don't, I don't know why I did that. And I, I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I. I really don't know. I really don't know. Just Why? But it just, it just, it just kind of drifted mm -hmm. towards the Japanese groups, mm -hmm. and I, I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it was a new experience, because I wasn't used to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, to me, I, yeah, I guess it was a new experience for me because I didn't really, mm -hmm. you know. I grew up with Caucasians in school. Yeah. Did you ever, do you ever remember, I don't know, maybe at a certain age, wishing your, um, your mother had like implanted more Japanese traditions or that maybe you had, there had been, I don't know, had you ever wished for some difference in the way you grew up or anything like that? Yeah, I wished I had kept, I was able to keep my Japanese, be able to speak Japanese. You know, I really wish I could do that because yeah. now um, I volunteer at Cairo. I don't know if you know, do you know what Cairo is? Yeah. Cairo is a group uh, of health care. Uh, it's a health care. Uh, they, they, ha they have a, a retirement home, an intermediate care. Uh, facility and um, two nursing homes, and it was under it, they they it was under they call it umbrella care, and it, and it was uh, uh, owned by or run by this group called Cairo. Well, they recently they recently sold it, mm -hmm. but uh, um, it it was run by a Japanese people. And I volunteer there, and so a lot of the people there speak Japanese, you know. And uh, I wish I could speak to them. Mm. <laughs> I know words, you know. I could say words and stuff, but I can't sit and have a conversation. You know, I can't sit and have a conversation. And I, I really regret that. I wished I, w I wished I could sit and talk to these people. Mm -hmm. So. I help at the intermediate care facility. Um, that facility, um, 
they can the people can do a lot of things themselves but they need help mm -hmm. with some things you know and so I help uh, the part that I volunteer is some of the people can walk you know you know they're they're fine they can right. walk by themselves they're fine but there are some people that they can walk but it's not safe for them to walk by themselves so they need somebody to walk them and that's what I do okay. so um, uh, once a week I go down and I, I walk uh, the people that uh, need help and so therefore I wish I could speak yeah. I could really speak to them although you know some of them speak English but there are there's some that speak strictly speak Japanese mm -hmm. have you um have you always like volunteered at places? Oh yeah, I I was three three afternoons a week. I volunteer at the elementary school, uh, where my kids used to used to go. Um, I three afternoons I volunteer there. One morning I volunteer at the um, uh, nursing home, the intermediate care, and then I help in the kitchen here on Wednesday mornings. Mm -hmm. so when did you start like volunteering? Like, like do you think, did you do anything like when your kids were in school? Or well I was always like, involved mm -hmm. when my kids were younger. My kids were very active mm -hmm. so it, that m means I have to do a lot of things but uh, I was involved at, at the school where they were going and you know PTA and room mother and all that kind of stuff and and then once uh, they were grown and gone, um, I worked for the school district as a substitute oh, okay. secretary, so my, I was connected to the schools. And then um, one of my friends, teacher, um, she was, had uh, some medical problems. She, she, had a, she was in an accident and then a um, car accident and then she had uh, a mastectomy and um, I hadn't seen her for a while and then one day I happened to see her and her ha ha fingers and her arm is all swollen mm -hmm. you know from the chemotherapy mm -hmm. and she teaches first grade and I, I, I was talking to her because I hadn't seen her for a little while and, and so I knew she must being teaching first grade. You have a lot of work, paperwork, yeah. and stuff. And and I, I thought, oh, she must she must be having a hard time. So I told her, I said, because um, I was still working, you know, part time. So I told her, I said, uh, I would help her. I said, if you need help, I said, I'll come and help you. You know, I, I can't tell you what days. I can't give you a specific day or anything because she knew I was working. And she said, oh, she said, I could use any help you could give me, you know, so just come down whenever you have time. So if any time I had any free time, I'd go down and help, help her. And um, so then I quit the um, working uh, for the district. And so then I started uh, volunteering in her classroom. And it, I was doing one day and then I started going two days and then uh, the other first grade teacher needed help too so then the third day I was helping her so three days I okay. <laughs> so I've been doing a, a lot of volunteer work did you do any when you were younger like <clears throat> like uh, yeah like when you first came or before you were married no because I was working at yeah. that time and um, I, I didn't not until you know, the yeah, kid. I had yeah, the kids. Was time later. Yeah. More. <laughs> yeah. And then I had the kids, and then you know, then I got involved in the school with the school. So. Okay. Yeah. So that's most of my time is you know, volunteering. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think I covered everything you want to follow up with. I guess I was going to end with, um, I know you told me advice, you know, you gave to your kids and your kids, like, yeah, young people today. Um, but do you remember any advice you you felt like your, your parents or your grandparents ever gave you or anything that stuck with you? Or maybe just like their own, 
maybe lessons from like their own life or their own. Like, well, I think um, just their work work ethics mm -hmm. because they work they work so hard. You know, back in those days, mm -hmm. you know, you really had to work hard, and just watching them work hard and you know and um, doing their best. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't think they ever said anything, but just just observing. Mm -hmm. What was so. your relationship like with your parents? Uh, I, it wasn't really that close mm -hmm. because my mom always worked. Mm -hmm. You know, there there were times um, when I was in. I remember in grade school there were there were times when we never even saw them because. She would leave early in the morning to go to work before we got up, and she'd come home late after we went to bed. Mm -hmm. So there were some days that we didn't even see them. And so, because they were, and I understood that, you know, that they had they had to work, and um, so you just, I just accepted it. But I don't think as if. I don't think they had that much time for us, really, you know. Remind me, did you say they stayed in Idaho or did they move back to... No, they Idaho? stayed in Idaho. Okay. Mm -hmm. They always stayed in Idaho. Did you guys go back to visit, like, with your kids? Uh, yeah, yeah, we went uh, a, few, a few times, you know. But they used to come down here, oh. uh, you know, That's whenever they can. more fun to come well, to L.A. then. <laughs> it was easier for them to get to go. For them to come down, That's for them true. to take four kids, <laughs> <laughs> travel with four kids, yeah. a little <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Do you do you feel like there's anything you didn't get to share like last time? Anything? No. Like you know, sometimes when you think yeah. back on like, oh, I forgot to say this. Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll probably think you. of something later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. Okay. Yeah.